Greetings. This is a New Zealand earthquake forecast video for 2013, 14 and 15 regarding the planetary alignment of Earth, Sun, Mercury and also the combined influences with the lunar perigee. We're now going to look at the past earthquakes that have struck in New Zealand that did have a corresponding Earth, Sun, Mercury alignment and we'll go as far back as March 5th, 1934 where a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck the Manawatu region in the North Island of New Zealand. Next up we had an earthquake on the 16th of December 1938 in Fiordland on the Alpine Fault. This was a 7 magnitude earthquake and this occurred two days after an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. The next significant earthquake occurred in Masterton. This was a magnitude 6.8 event in the North Island of New Zealand and this occurred on the 1st of August 1942 just two days prior to an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. There was a 6.3 magnitude earthquake in the Manawatu region in the North Island of New Zealand on the 24th of June 1951. This was one day prior to an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. A very strong 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck near Rail Island in the Kermatic Islands. This was south of New Zealand. Now this was a strong earthquake on the 14th of September 1959, just one day prior to an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. A very strong 8.2 magnitude earthquake struck south of New Zealand in the Macquarie Islands region. This occurred on the 24th of May 1989 and this was just one day after an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. There was a 7 magnitude earthquake northeast of New Zealand's East Cape. This occurred on the 3rd of February 1995, just three days prior to the alignment. There was another strong earthquake the same year on the 24th of November where a 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck in Canterbury and this occurred just two days prior to a Mercury Sun Earth alignment. The next significant earthquake occurred two days after the Earth Sun Mercury alignment. It was a magnitude 6.7 earthquake in Gisborne or just off the East Cape. 2009, there was a very strong 7.8 magnitude earthquake in Southland on the Alpine Fault. This occurred a day after the Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. On the 3rd of September 2010, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake struck in Dartfield, Canterbury, a significant and powerful earthquake, and shortly thereafter the new Greendale Fault was born. This also occurred on the same day of an Earth-Mercury Sun alignment. The 22nd of February 2011, a powerful 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck Christchurch causing significant damage and a significant loss of life. This occurred just two days prior to an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment. And the last significant earthquake to affect the New Zealand region occurred on the 13th of June 2011 where a 6 magnitude earthquake struck Christchurch in the South Island of New Zealand. Now this also occurred on the same day of the Earth-Mercury opposition. Now listing these significant earthquakes just mentioned, adding the lunar perigee information and also the Earth-Sun Mercury alignments as well as the gap between the perigee and earthquakes and also the strength of the lunar perigee with the high number being the strongest. We're now looking at the last 80 years of data and from this we get to see that the supermoon or the lunar perigee and the Earth-Sun Mercury alignments only coincided four times which therefore makes it a very rare event but what is interesting in 2009 and 10 back-to-back -back supermoons and very strong earthquakes, a 7.8 magnitude in Dusky Sound on the Alpine Fault and the following year the very strong earthquake, the 7.1 magnitude event in Dartfield, Canterbury. Now it is worth noting that the two significant earthquakes that struck in 2011 were both accurately forecasted ahead of time on this channel and that's the February 22nd and also the June 13th quakes. Now we'll leave a link in the description box and also as a video response and play two clips of these videos right now. received some sort of earthquake in this region also, perhaps 6.2 to 6.5 in magnitude. And the most likely areas would be south 45 to 50 degrees. If we do get a large earthquake in the southern hemisphere, it would more than likely be the base of New Zealand extending down to the Macquarie Islands. This is a fairly active fault line and I do believe that the coronal holes seems to be fairly symmetric to this region. Now there is a concern that the Christchurch region may be involved it does sit at 43 degrees south latitude and it is fairly close to the area that I'm worried about so we do need to um, keep a close eye on this also.
Greetings. This is a planetary alignment and earthquake watch for June 13, 2011. I am showing two significant alignments with SimSolar for this day. I'm going to be plotting two regions that I feel could be at risk for a significant earthquake. First off, we'll have a look at 23 degrees south latitude. The most likely region will be adjacent to New Caledonia, and that's the Loyalty Islands region. And my second area of concern will be the region of New Zealand, and more specifically Christchurch. Now the reason for this analysis is there is a distinct relationship between Earth, Sun and Mercury alignments. We're now going to look at the lunar perigee and also the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment and try to find the strongest dates for the year which may affect the New Zealand region. Now the strongest lunar perigee is occurring towards the middle of the year and this occurs May, June and July. These are very strong points and definitely a period in heightened earthquake activity. Now we'll have a look at the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignments and see if they coincide. We're now looking at the lunar perigee timetable for 2013 and comparing them with the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignments which occur six times during the year. Now the key dates of the very strong lunar perigees of May, June and July, there's not really an Earth-Sun Mercury alignment which is coinciding, which is fortunate, the nearest being on May the 11th, which is a full 15 days off the lunar perigee. Now the key dates to watch for the year in terms of a very strong earthquake potential for New Zealand would be March the 3rd and also December 28th, as there's only two and four days between the lunar perigee points and also the alignment of Earth-Sun and Mercury. We've just had a brief look of 2013 and it does look to be fairly ominous towards the end of the year with a very strong lunar perigee but it even gets stronger 2014 and 15 unfortunately and that may mean some very strong earthquakes coming for the New Zealand region in the next three years. We're now looking at the Sun and Mercury a little bit more closely by looking at their declination at the time of their significant earthquakes and there is an interesting pattern that has been found out of 11 earthquakes that have been registered in this research that we are looking at, eight of these quakes affected the New Zealand mainland and they were all within two and a half degrees of declination, which is an interesting feature. Now the other three earthquakes that were outside of the two and a half degree threshold, they didn't affect the New Zealand mainland and they also were associated with very weak lunar perigees. Now it does appear that declination is playing a key role in these earthquakes that are striking the New Zealand mainland and declination is the movement of planets and the sun above and below the celestial equator and it does appear that when the declination is very tight or within a two and a half degree threshold a significant earthquake window is possible. We're now looking at 2014 a little bit more closely by looking at the lunar perigee information, the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment information as well as their date of separation and this does appear to be a very strong year in terms of lunar influences much stronger than 2012 and 13. Now the January 1st and August 10 dates are almost identical in terms of strength of Supermoon Day. Now I do feel that their key dates for the year will obviously be August 8, 9 and 10. We also have a key influence for April 26, which is only three days off as well, but it does have a very weak lunar modulation and I do feel that that earthquake will be offshore, perhaps again in the Comatic Islands region or in the Macquarie Islands region. But I do feel that the very strong earthquake potential will obviously be at the start of the year and also August 8, 9 and 10. We're now looking at the lunar perigee dates for 2015 as well as the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignments and their date of separation and on face value 2015 looks fairly weak when you compare this to 2014, a fairly weak looking start but things do pick up towards the middle of the year and beyond where we see September 28, the supermoon is coinciding with an Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment only a day later and I would expect a very powerful earthquake on one of those days. I've now listed a time window of dates of a two degree declination of Mercury and Sun for the next two years where a strong earthquake potential may be possible for the New Zealand region and 2013 only has one date of note once you filter out the lunar perigee and also the alignment of Earth, Sun and Mercury and as mentioned that date is December 28 through to January 1st 2014. We have four lunar perigees in 2014 that coincide with the two and a half degree declination time window from Mercury and Sun, but two of them are filtered out by the Earth-Mercury-Sun alignment and that leaves only two days for the year of significance for the New Zealand region, April 23rd and also August 10th. 
Now, the supermoon date will be the main area of focus, but I do feel like the April 23rd date may actually be a strong earthquake potential just north or south of New Zealand, possibly in the Kermatic Islands or the Macquarie Islands region. We're now looking at three important dates with regards to strong earthquake potentials for the New Zealand region, and these are also associated with strong lunar perigees and the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment. Now, the first of these dates occurs towards the end of the year, where I feel a strong earthquake potential is possible. Now, this alignment occurs on the December 28 to December 30 time frame, and the lunar perigee, a very strong lunar perigee, occurs on the 1st of January 2014. Now, this is almost the strongest for the year, as it's only 21 kilometres away from being so. So this strong alignment is very important, as it has the added influence of Venus, which is lurking very nearby, and also Jupiter. The strongest lunar perigee for 2014 occurs on the 10th of August and we just so happen to have an Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment occurring a day and a half prior which is significant and I feel should produce a very powerful earthquake here on the Earth and more than likely be in the New Zealand region. Now we also have another supporting alignment involving Venus, Sun and Mars which actually occurs five days prior on the 3rd of August. The strongest lunar perigee for 2015 occurs on the 28th of September and this also coincides with another Earth-Sun-Mercury alignment which occurs a day later. So this is significant as we have both in 2014 and 15, the Earth-Sun-Mercury alignments are occurring very close or near to the supermoon, which should produce very strong earthquakes, possibly around 7 magnitude on either one of these days. In conclusion, I have isolated 8 key dates for the New Zealand region over the next 3 years which may produce earthquakes over 5 magnitude for the region with the key dates marked in red which are in and around the supermoon dates or the lunar perigee. And that's my research and analysis of the planetary alignment of Earth, Sun and Mercury and its influences in the New Zealand region with a forecast of earthquake potentials for the region. Thanks for watching.